Hello once again to all you great smelling perfume parlor legends out there and welcome back to Mags Frags where it's the fragrance that's the start of the show. I'm Paul and it's my mission to introduce you to your perfect signature scent. In today's episode I'm going to be taking a look at another five ball extract spray haul from the perfume parlor which are now uh, available in these sleek looking all new white bottles as well as the uh, traditional black ones of course. There's uh, no difference in concentration and it is purely down to uh, an aesthetic thing. But you may want to say have the white bottles for your uh, spring and summer fragrance collection and then maybe the black bottles for, the, for your autumn and winter collection, who knows. Uh, but definitely let me know uh, what you think to this new colourway down in the comments section. All five of these are based on luxury niche fragrances, so they are a little bit more complex than your average mass appealing designer scents. Uh, but they're all very interesting and unique in their own right. So if you're looking for something a little bit more unique and edgy, uh, then these in today's list just might be the ones to try out. And finally, just before I begin the countdown, if you are interested in picking up any of these balls to try out for yourself, uh, I do have a unique discount code, uh, which will get you 10% discount off your first order. And that code is Paul10. And I'll also leave uh, a direct link to the Perfume Parlor website down in the description. Okay, so the first one today goes by the name of Perky, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1823. This is a copy of The Noir by, uh, 29 by Le Labo, which is an aromatic earthy scent from 2015, and it's said to be inspired by the aroma of black tea. It opens up with an interesting blend of fig, bay leaves and bergamot, which produces a fairly fresh, but also fairly fruity introduction. But then as it settles down, you'll notice the uh, black tea accord starts to make its way through as it dries down. There's also some green herbal touches in there, but it's the fig and the tea that definitely grabs my attention the most. So it's uh, kind of in the similar ballpark to uh, other fig dominant fragrances like Philosikos by uh, Diptyque and also Fico di Amalfi by Aqua di Parma. Uh, whilst obviously having its uh, plenty of its own unique character, of course. For the uh, first couple of hours, it produces a soapy, clean and relaxing scent aroma. It's quite dry, green and leafy. So I think uh, it'd be great to wear as a casual daytime scent during the spring and early summer. It's a very easy going outdoorsy type scent profile, but the base consists of cedar wood, vetiver and musk. So as you get into the second half of the scent, it does become uh, much more dry and earthy with also some powdery muskiness in there also. Uh, but it always uh, manages to stay quite bright and airy throughout. It's without doubt a unisex fragrance and even though there's nothing at all feminine about it, I do feel that more women will enjoy this rather than men because of that tea and fig combo. Uh, it's definitely not a, a masculine aroma either though and uh, you'd need to have a, a little bit of confidence to pull this one off. It's not something I'd uh, ever wear on a night out and it would be uh, probably uh, best wear, uh, worn as like a, a work or office scent uh, but overall it's a, a very pleasant and likeable aroma. However, if you're quite new to fragrances and haven't come across uh, notes like fig and tea before, it might take a little bit of getting used to because it's nothing like anything you'd find in uh, fragrances from high street designer brands. The performance on this perfume parlor extract spray is really good and you'll uh, be catching wafts of it all day. It's also very accurate to the original once it settles down. But like I say in all, uh, all my perfume parlor haul videos, uh, the opening 10 minutes of these copy versions are a, a little bit more harsh and synthetic smelling than the original ones until that kind of perf uh, perfumer's alcohol totally evaporates. Uh, but usually after about 10 minutes or so, you'll struggle to uh, ever tell them apart from the much more expensive originals that they're based on. But yes, this is uh, a solid everyday type scent for the warmer months of the year and uh, one you should definitely try out for yourselves. Okay, so next up we have this one called Rhythmic Aroma and the perfume parlor card on this one is 0943. This one is a copy of Groove Escape by Zerzhoff, which is a spicy ambery fragrance that's probably better suited to the colder months of the year. But if you live in a, a country like uh, the UK, where we get about five hot sunny days per year, it's uh, fine to wear all year round. This again is a, a multi-layered complex fragrance that's best suited to anyone that's uh, a bit deeper into their fragrance journey, because it uh, does contain some rich and exotic notes that some of you might not enjoy straight away. 
It opens with a, a combination of spices including cardamom, ginger and pepper, alongside ambery resins such as alimi, benzoin and myrrh. So pretty much straight away out of the gate you'll get a, a like a, a spiced amber accord. But there's also lots of other little uh, additions like rose and mimosa that just add a, a mild floral touch. There's incense and labdanum in the base that bring a smoky, leathery undertone and uh, patchouli grounds the scent with a slightly dirty earthiness. This is a rich, warm and sophisticated fragrance with more of a, a masculine edge to it in my opinion. It's got a, a darker, mystical and uh, gothic quality to its character so uh, it's perfect to pair with like a leather jacket and jeans if you're heading out to a gig or a, a live music bar etc. It's quite an addictive scent that does smell powerful and aromatic, uh, but it's also one that's going to divide people down the middle. I've got to admit that when I first smelled this uh, for the first time, I wasn't at all impressed with it, and I thought it smelled a little bit oily and uh, downright dirty, uh, but the more exposure that I've had to it, the more that it's grown on me. Now I, uh, I quite like it. But it's definitely uh, not one that I'd describe as a safe blind buy, and it is uh, a fairly polarising scent. The performance again is really good with a, a strong projection uh, that will de without doubt get you noticed and uh, it's going to last a good 7 to 8 hours before you'll stop detecting it. This is a, a really interesting and daring scent so if you want something a little bit left field and edgy uh, then it's uh, a really good one to get your nose on. Okay so the third one today is called Honshu and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1174. This is a copy of Kyoto by Diptyque, uh, which was a limited edition launched in 2021 to honour 60 years of the brand. However, it's no longer available now in the UK and it's become nigh on impossible to get your hands on a, a bottle of the original. It's a, a fresh earthy scent with prominent notes of beetroot, uh, vetiver, Turkish rose and incense. But it starts out very sharp and spicy with a definite hint of lemon in the opening and perhaps some ginger or pepper in there also because you are met with a, a spicy kick from the initial spray. It's a really bright and uplifting uh, opening that's extremely fresh and tangy uh, but it's not long before it settles down and as the vetiver and the beetroot start to come through you will notice more of its earthy character uh, begin to form. The vetiver doesn't come off too dry and grassy though and instead it's quite a damp outdoorsy smell uh, like you'd get on a wet autumn day. The Turkish rose uh, softens the overall aroma and adds a very mild floral accent uh, but don't worry if you're like me and uh, you don't like the uh, the rose note that much um, it, there's not, it's not too prominent in this and I can barely tell that it's in there. It just brings a bit of a velvety smoothness and just rounds off all the sharp edges. The incense again is uh, not in your face and perhaps adds just a small amount of smokiness to the background layer uh, but to be honest everything is uh, so well blended that it's difficult to isolate individual notes apart from maybe the vetiver in this one. It's inspired by a Japanese garden and uh, a lovely easy going outdoorsy type scent is exactly what you get with this and it's perfect for the spring and summer months. It's probably marketed towards women uh, more than it is men to be fair uh, but some guys uh, may find it also leans a little bit feminine but I personally I'd have no problem wearing this in the warmer months of the year and uh, I'd say that it's uh, just a really quirky and interesting pickup. In terms of performance it starts out really strong with a big projection for the first hour or so uh, but because it's a, a brighter fresher fragrance it probably doesn't last uh, quite as long as uh, a couple of the others in today's list. It's not a weak scent though and you will keep catching wafts of it for at least 5-6 to six hours after you first spray it. It's possibly the safest blind buy in today's haul and I can't see many people disliking how it smells. It's a refreshing easy to wear scent and uh, one that you should definitely add to your uh, spring and summer collection. Ok next up we have this one called Golden Spice Noir and the perfume parlor code on this is 2061. This one is a copy of Blonde Amber by Clive Christian and a 50ml bottle of the original is going to set you back a cool £490. This 30ml perfume palette extract spray is just £22 and smells extremely similar so if you fancy saving yourself 460 quid and uh, still smell like a billionaire then this is uh, where it's at. There's uh, no less than 24 different fragrance notes listed in this one so I won't bore you by reading them all out uh, and I'm not even going to pretend that uh, any particular one of them uh, jumps out to me when I smell it but overall it is a, a warm spiced amber scent laced with a, a boozy rum and a, a creamy vanilla background layer. 
There's also some dried fruits in there, some white tobacco and some mild floral. So basically just a, a little bit of everything in this one. And I've got to say that this is an absolute beauty and uh, it actually smells extremely expensive and luxurious uh, right from the first initial spray. It has that kind of wow factor and uh, you can just tell that you're dealing with something a little bit special as soon as you smell this one. It opens with a, a vibrant burst of bitter orange and a boozy rum note, complemented by a, a variety of spices such as cardamom and ginger, alongside a, a zesty hint of bergamot and grapefruit. But very quickly, the heart notes uh, come alive with an exotic blend of rich and resinous ingredients that bring a really warm and comforting aroma, bordering on being like a, a gourmand type fragrance. The amber accord that everything is centered around comes from the combination of myrrh and olibanum and the vanilla, and these uh, are what bring the smooth, creamy sweetness. The dried fruits give off a, a peach or an apricot-like accord, whilst the white florals, including jasmine, tuberose, uh, just have like a, a subtle, clean soapiness to the composition. In the base, there's some woody and earthy tones, including cedar, patchouli, labdanum and musk. So there's a huge amount of depth, and it's just one of those fragrances where you can just smell it 20, 20 different times throughout its lifespan and uh, pick up on uh, 20 different uh, things every time. It's uh, an absolute belter that's uh, best suited for the autumn and winter months, and it's definitely more of a night out fragrance rather than one to wear casually during the day. This perfume parlor version is an absolute awesome copy, uh, but it's one that just goes out of stock really, really quickly. So you need to add this one to your wish list and uh, purchase it as soon as it comes back into stock. Otherwise, you'll miss out if you don't pick it up straight away. The uh, performance is huge and it's one that will last you a good 10 to 12 hours before you stop catching wafts of it. Uh, it's not a, an overpowering projector though, and people will need to be within a few feet of you to be able to smell it on you. Uh, but it won't fail to get you noticed with its uh, refined and sophisticated scent trail. I can't recommend this one enough, and if you uh, definitely get the chance to get your hands on a bottle, then I'm sure you'll be blown away by it. Okay, so next up is this one called Guarding Wood, and the perfume parlor code on this is 1083. This is a copy of Bois Martial from the Givenchy uh, Signature Collection, which is the only one in today's list that I haven't yet smelled the original. Uh, but I was on the lookout for some interesting spring and summer freshies, and I just saw this, uh, and it was described as a tropical fruity scent with uh, notes of pineapple, coconut, and cedar. So it sounded really promising. And uh, out of all of the ones in today's haul, this is the one that I was most excited to try. And uh, I thought it was going to be the one that I enjoyed the most, but in actual fact, it's probably my least favourite out of these five, and it's uh, nothing like what I thought it'd be. I stupidly misread the note description, and uh, it's actually pineapple leaf and coconut leaf uh, that's kind of listed in this one. So it's more of a green herbaceous smelling scent, which is quite sour smelling. Uh, and I was expecting a sweet, juicy pineapple combined with like a creamy coconut, uh, which is maybe, I'm kind of looking for maybe a more grown-up version of uh, Le Beau by Jean-Paul Gaultier, uh, but it couldn't be more different. Like I say, this is uh, quite a sour uh, fragrance, especially in the opening. And I get like a synthetic lavender accord for the uh, first hour, uh, and I just don't enjoy it personally. It's fairly bright and airy smelling, but to me it's just like a, a synthetic sour mess. And it's uh, very rare that I'm uh, so negative about a fragrance, but this one uh, I just don't gel with whatsoever. Like I say, I haven't smelled the original, so I can't tell you whether the perfume parlor have just missed the target with this one, or whether the original also smells this funky. Uh, but it's uh, one that I, I can't see many people really enjoying. To me, it's just a, a bitter, chemical, lavender-scented toilet cleaner type smell that's not disgusting or anything like that, but it's just uh, not very nice. And unfortunately, it's a, a very hard pass for me, I'm afraid. The performance isn't that great either, and after the initial medicinal sourness that lasts for about an hour, it just kind of fizzles out into like a mild, woody dry down. And within a, a couple of hours, it's just gone. It's possibly one of the worst, worst ones that I've ever picked up from the perfume parlor, unfortunately, and I uh, certainly won't be uh, wearing this one ever again, and I definitely wouldn't recommend that you just go ahead and blind buy this one. And finally, we can't finish on a negative note, so I've uh, decided to include one uh, that I actually bought for a different video, hence the uh, different bottle design, uh, but it's probably better suited to this episode anyway. This one is called Sandalwood Whispers, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0342. 
This is a copy of Santal Damshar from the Armani Privé collection that came out in 2022. And as the name would suggest, it's a woody fragrance for men and women. The top notes in this are Calabrian bergamot, cardamom and violet leaf. In the heart, there's musk, alimu resin and olibanum. And in the base, there's sandalwood, Virginia cedar and dreamwood. Okay, so this one opens up bright and zingy with the uh, bergamot blending with the green cardamom to produce an almost minty freshness. But very quickly, it starts to sweeten up uh, as those resins and, uh, in the heart of the scent and the violet leaves start to make their way through. And after about the 10 minute mark, it starts to remind me a little bit of Halfetti by Penn Halligans. Uh, but this is perhaps a, a little bit lighter and less complex. But anyone who's familiar with how Halfetti smells will no doubt make the connection between the two. It will also get compared to Santal 33 from Le Labo with it being sandalwood, uh, sandalwood forward. Uh, but for me, it's more co uh, comparable to uh, Alfetti with having more of a, a Middle Eastern spicy edge to it. The sandalwood is super smooth and produces a great pencil shavings accord, uh, which never comes off dry because of those sweet resins in the heart of the scent. We've also got uh, some more woodiness in the far dry down from the cedar and the dream wood, uh, which is a note I've never actually come across before, but apparently it's also pretty similar to uh, sandalwood in terms of how it smells. Uh, and it's described as smelling creamy and warm. And that's pretty much what I get from this fragrance. It's just really dreamy and relaxing. It's very laid back and easy to wear and it's uh, really versatile. So you could pretty much wear it day or night, virtually all year round. It's maybe a touch sweet for the hottest uh, months of the year during maybe summertime. But apart from that, it's fine for any situation and it's uh, going to absolutely shine on cooler days when you just want something a little bit more warm and comforting. The performance again uh, is really good on this one and you're going to get easily six hours of longevity with a, a decent moderate projection. This is going to suit anyone who's looking to get into niche perfumery because it's not too complex or challenging. Uh, but it's got just enough character to uh, set you apart from your high street designer brands. Again, the perfume palette have nailed the accuracy with this one, and I can't tell the difference between uh, this version and the original. This uh, is just £20 for a 30ml bottle size, whereas the original will set you back around £125 for just 20ml extra. So definitely uh, one I'd highly recommend that you try out for yourself, and uh, let me know down in the comments section what you think of it. Okay, so in summary, the highlights for me in this little haul are the uh, Clive Christian Blonde Amber copy, the uh, Diptyque Kyoto copy, and the uh, Santal Damshar copy. The only one that I don't really like is that Givenchy uh, Bois Martial copy. But like I said in the intro, all of these uh, are going to be slightly more complex than your average designer fragrances that you'll find in your local high street perfume shop. Uh, but they are quirky and unique and will make you stand out from the crowd. Okay, so that's about it for this latest Perfume Parlor haul review, but uh, I've also got another one coming up uh, for you ladies out there in the uh, next few days, which are mainly all unisex fragrances anyway. So fellas, if you're watching this, don't forget to also tune in for that one. It's not just women's perfumes. So until next time, stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye-bye for now.